Okay, hello everyone. This is Kermit Asher. Thank you so much for joining. And we're about to continue our live painting demonstration and we're doing our landscape painting. And the last time we left, we had a few mountains that we started and we have our trees. And we do want to complete adding some more trees here. And we do apologize about the quality of our camera. And we're working in a new situation and we really do uh, look forward to getting more quality videos for you. So let's make sure that we get started and we have our colors. We have an array of colors that we're going to use to work with and we're going to build up some more trees here on the background of our mountains. And we're going to start from a concept of darkness to light. So we're going to start by creating our trees from darkness as if we only have a dark tone, some shadowy tone. So we're going to get some black and some green and we're going to create some of these trees, okay? So we're going right here to our black and our green. We want to make sure we're always having fun and let's have confidence, okay? So with our black and green, I just want to make some vertical rises here. Just a few vertical rises, a few vertical rises. And just like anything overlapping, because these trees are overlapping, they're in nature, they're going to come on top of each other. So putting these evergreens in, we just want to make sure we're going side to side and that we're making them wider at the base than they are at the top, just like a Christmas tree. So here, it's overlapping. I'm not at all concerned that this evergreen is overlapping the other one. That's what happens in nature. Things will overlap, and we're starting with our darker tone. We're adding more trees. We can go right back into our brush. I'm just using this flat brush here to give us a nice straight edge. Nice sharp edge here. Again, we're just building up on our trees, adding more evergreens, and we're using a darker tone, as if we only have one dark tone, a silhouette sort of tone. So we're adding more trees here to our nature landscape here. We always start from a concept of darkness to light. So although this looks dark and we really can't see the details that we want, we're gonna add some highlights coming up shortly. And we hope everyone is staying safe and doing well. So we wanna make sure that we see everyone back nice and healthy. And we wanna make sure that we're doing the necessary things we need to do to stay safe, okay? So we're gonna come here and add a maybe a couple of more trees over here and i'm just popping in these evergreens we're making them wider at the base than they are at the top okay and we're just using a dark tone we're using black and green okay okay so we pop in a few more of our evergreens and now what we're going to do is move along and create some highlights in our mountains, okay? So what we're going to do is come back with our highlight tone. We're going to get some yellow, and we're going to get a little red. We're going to add a little white to that. And we're going to come along the base of this edge of the highlight side of the mountains to see if we can get a few more of those bright sunlight spots that hit on the mountain because we want to make sure that we're showing that light is distributed in different places and different ways. So if something is sticking out, it's going to catch light. Things that recede back into the shadows, they don't get as much light. So let's go ahead and mix our yellow, our white, and a little bit of red. And we hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. We hope that everyone stayed healthy and Stay positive regardless of whatever is going on in the world. We want to make sure we have a proper perspective, and that's truly where our art comes in. Our art is like our lifesaver, you know. It helps to keep us keep things in perspective. So coming along here with our highlights, we just want to dab some highlight here. Dab a few spaces of light that shows how light is hitting in certain areas of the mountain more than other areas, okay? 
So we're simply placing our highlights in certain points on the lighter side of the mountain. Yellow and white and a little red. Yellow, white, and a little red. And a little paint goes a long way. And I want to come right there on that line that separates the shadow side from the light side. Really give us a nice point. But make sure that we don't do one drag heavy line. Let's make sure that we're dabbing the light, okay? Dabbing. We touch it in one space, pick up and move on to another space so we can get a natural distribution of light, okay? We're dabbing our color here, just on our highlight side, dabbing in here and there. And we want to come here and add a little bit more of our red and white. And we're just simply adding highlights to the, high, to the light side of the mountain. Dabbing highlights. But as we get to the corner, we want to make sure we don't add too many highlights in the corner. We want to make sure we keep our corners darker or a little bit subdued. What that does is it forces the attention to be in the center portion of the painting where we get a lot of our energy from. So let's make sure that we're focusing on making sure that we have subtle, dark edges. And once we get a little bit of this work done, we can go back and add some of the highlights to our evergreen trees. Okay, we're just adding a few more of our highlights here. And now we can see a little bit, I know it's kind of difficult to see, but we have the mist here that's coming at the base of the mountain. That's gonna create a good contrast or the blues and the waters that we're going to sneak in here. So we're going to add a little blue on our brush and we want to make some horizontal strokes and let's work in some water that's going to be just beneath the mist that we see at the base of the mountains. So we have our blue. We can get a little purple in I think adding sometimes a little white with that gives you a nice color blue. So here's what we're gonna be doing. We're just gonna be making a general side-to-side -side stroke, okay? So there's nothing to be intimidated about. We're just taking lightly, moving side-to-side, -side, moving our brush side-to-side, -side. you see that? Moving this side-to-side, -side, creating that area where the water comes in and we can distinguish the water from the mist at the base of the mountains, okay? So we're honoring the horizontal plane, moving side to side, moving our brush side to side, just like so. And we want to streak in here as well. Make sure we're streaking, streaking, okay? Now we can get to see a lot of the water feel in here and some of the illusion and the feel of water. And while we have a little blue on our brush, we want to take this time to dab a little bit of this blue into the cool side of the mountain. So as we talked about before, we have our warm colors, which would be our reds, our orange, and our yellows. They exemplify warmth. And then we have our cool colors, which would be our blues and our purples and greens sometimes. This is why when we go buy a bag of ice, it's almost always written in blue because ice is a cool color. But uh, you're not, you'll be hard pressed to find a bag of ice where the word ice is written in red because the manufacturers know that red is a warm color. So while we're here in the cool or the shadow side of the mountains, let's add some cool shadowy colors. So we're just dabbing here the same way we did with our highlights over here. And when we get that camera together where we can really see a lot of this great detail, you'll see exactly what these small, seemingly small effects do. So a lot of times we in painting, we do these little things that it seems like it doesn't make sense, but 
only when you kind of look at it from the broader perspective does it all come together to make sense. So we're just adding a little bit of this blue down here on the cool or shallow side of the mountain. Now we have this mist that is coming at the base of the mountain. Now will be a super cool time to add some nice colors to this mist. So we can see the mist is sort of has a hazy sort of gray feel and we can create that gray by mixing obviously black and white. But also we want to add some color to that to make it more believable and to make it more interesting quite frankly. So let's take a little bit of our black and white to make a misty gray. But then let's add some purple to it, okay? So by us adding purple to this, we can create some interesting misty colors, okay? And want to be very light with this, making circular motions very gently. And we even want to kind of bring the mist up towards the mountains just so we can kind of see this easy blend of mist going up towards the mountains, okay? So here we're making circular motions, nice and soft circular motions, and I'm not pressing hard into the canvas at all. Nice circular motions, soft circular motions. And we wanna bring this slightly up into our mountains, and we don't want it to kind of be on one level because when you see mist, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. It's not this always on one level, okay? So we have like a cool sort of, I guess, mysterious looking mist at the bottom of the mountain. We don't want to look like a horror movie now, okay? <laughs> but we are creating some mist. But what this also does is create a light so that if we want to put more things, like more it could be distant trees or it could be something living at the base of this mountain. It would definitely stand out because we have a lighter colored mist coming along the base of this mountain. So this is part of the contrast where dark meets light and it allows both to show up, much like a black ink on a white piece of paper. So we just want to create a little bit of this mist and we want to gradually carry it over here into the edge of our canvas, and you see we're making soft, circular motions, no stress, no pressure. We're simply making these circular motions right into our canvas. And painting is so therapeutic. I tell you, when you start to do this at home, you'll see that it's it really is something that that is all about healing, if you will. So it's not about putting pressure on ourselves about our skill level, or if we can paint as well as someone else can paint. It's not a competition. More so, we wanna understand this is, this is a gift, and a gift that allows us to relax and allows us to bring in healing. And when we can make a strong enough peace, we can bring happiness and healing to other people's lives. So, Let's make sure that we're looking at things in the proper perspective and understanding the real nature and the power of what's at stake and what we have uh, when we're painting, okay? So we have a nice light mist at the base of our mountains. We have some blues in here. It sneaks on over to the lighter colors. And now we can add a few more Hey, let's add a little bit more of the intense pinks and reds. So we can get a little red and white. Red and white will give us a pink. And it's really a cool misty tone. And I'm toning it down on my paper when I add it another color with it as well. So we want to make sure that we tone things down. If something is too bright, by all means, tone it down with a color that is slightly darker than what you have. That's what we mean by toning it down. So for instance, if your yellow is too bright, we can tone it down by adding orange, which is like the second color 
next to yellow, which would be the darkest color next to yellow in the yellow family, okay? So we can take this mist and bring this over, and just like on the other side, we don't want our mist to be all on one level. We want some of it to kind of come high, some of it to go low. And now this concept of a dry brush, it's something that is a time on a technique and you see there's no paint on this brush, but I'm gonna use it as a blender. So by me taking this dry brush and working it on top of the paint that I just placed here, it's acting as a blender, okay? So let's make sure we understand these time on techniques of blending with the dry brush and using other techniques to get our colors to blend and work the way that we want them to work, okay? And first of all, give yourselves a round of applause because, I mean, hey, we're in different situations and sometimes you have to admit when you're doing a good job and when you're doing the right thing. So you're tuning in to us, you're doing the right thing, and you're utilizing your time. So we want to make sure that we understand and be mindful that we are, in, in spite of whatever else is going on in the world, we are making strides and making those steps to do the right things, okay? So now we, that our evergreens have dried now, now we're gonna go and kind of kick up the light. So we did this in a darker tone, we used blacks and greens, so which is like a shadowy, super dark tone. But now we wanna come in with some greens and yellow, and maybe even a dab of white with the green and yellow to intensify the evergreens that we see in this area, okay? So let's mix a little green and yellow, and a dab of white. This is going to give us a uh, opportunity to make some really cool highlights on our evergreens. And again, we want to make sure that we're dabbing, not trying to do too much. We just want to dab these here and there, dabbing these. I know we don't have the luxury of you seeing the details, but again, we will get those issues straightened out. Just dabbing the brighter green on top of the darker foliages that we put in here. So we placed in a few of our darknesses. We started off from the dark to the light. And now with this brighter green, we're just dabbing here and there, making a few points of light, a few points of interest to hit on the trees so that someone looking at this picture, they understand that this is none other than light hitting on the evergreen trees, okay? And this is so fun, I tell you, when you first get started, even if you have any doubts or whatever, the more we do things, the more we do anything, the better we're gonna get at it, okay? So let's make sure that we're confident and that we're not too hard on ourselves, that we're giving ourselves a break and looking at things in the proper perspective, okay? All right, so we're dabbing this in. All right, so we have these evergreens popping here, and we want to add a little bit more green highlights to our evergreens here. And it's about having an array of green. Let's not think that we have to have one tone of green, one shade of green. We actually want to have multiple shades of green. And one way we get multiple shades of green is by being comfortable with mixing our colors. So we definitely want to make sure that we're mixing our colors and feeling comfortable mixing our colors. And we will have a, a class where we show the power of mixing colors, how we can come up with some wonderful wonderful effects simply by understanding the colors that we need to mix. And often what we always talk about in our class is definitely if there are three colors that we want to make sure that we get if we're shopping for colors, it's going to be our primary colors. Because from our primary colors, all other colors exist. So our primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. All right, so we've done a little work here and we have some 
brightness at the base of our trees here. We start to see the green in our, ever, in our evergreen trees starting to kick up a notch, and that's exactly what we want. And also, this will be a cool time to add like a grassy sort of hilly area over here because it's in some darkness, and just by taking some brighter green and making some downstrokes, we can see if we can create the illusion of a grassy sort of hill that these trees are sitting on. Let's pop in that grassy hill. So I'm taking some yellow here. And I want to go into a little white. Yellow and white, and now some green. So with yellow, white, and green, it's going to give me some sort of brighter tone here. Some sort of bright green. That's kind of what we want here, because we're trying to indicate a little light here. So we have our light side here and our shadow side here. So surely if the light is coming from this direction, then we would most likely see some light at the base of these trees. So let's create, we can do our downstroke here. Look at this downstroke. Yes, let's create this hill. It's a hill with greeny grass coming down here. Look at that. We created our hill here. And it kind of runs into the base of that mountain. So we have a grassy hill here that our trees are sitting on. And we want to create this, all the illusions we're going to need this darkness. Let's not get too happy with our green. We don't want to take it all the way down to the mist. We just kind of want to give the illusion that we have some bright green grass in certain areas and that even the clouds could come and take over to create some of the shadows that we see, okay? So we're creating some bright green grass. And because this grass is far away, Notice that we don't see any texture like thick grass as you would see if grass were closer up to us. Like when we create grass that's gonna be in this foreground, we're gonna see the texture of that grass. But because this grass represents land that's furthest away in the horizon, it's not gonna be as much texture. So the further away things go, the smaller that they appear to look, okay? And we definitely want to have the mechanism set up so that we could hear people. If there are people who want to ask questions during the time of the filming, we definitely would love that interaction. And for people to have any questions that you would like, we definitely would like to address your questions and see if we can get any assistance and help that you need right away. Okay, so we have our green area of our grass popped in over here. It's like a nice little hill where our evergreens are sitting on top of here and it leads into this background. So what we can do is let's just bring this grassy hill in front of the mountain. So we want to have overlapping, okay? So here's overlapping. And now we'll let this kind of fade into our mist. So now what we have here is this area of land that's overtaking this area, so the mountain is in the background, and this represents land that's closer to you, the viewer, okay? This is so cool, like when you start doing these things and we start having fun and understanding the nature of what we're doing, I mean, as they say, the sky's the limit, and we can really do whatever it is that we want to do, okay? Okay, so we are popping in our hill, and what we need to do is we want to create some shadows up in this area, the grass that is beneath this area. Now I'm going to go back into some of my darker greens, okay? So we're going to get some dark greens in this area. 
And if a little black is in there, that's just fine. So right here, we're gonna make this area towards the bottom darker, okay? See, we have a, the, the sunlight hitting at this top of the hill. Now we'll come down the hill, we're gonna lose some of that bright, bright grass, okay? So this is why we're adding some darker greens at this level, okay? Let's make sure we are having fun, okay? All right. And now for the blend, I'm going to add a little yellow. I'm going to place this right on top of the line where the grass, where the bright grass and the dark grass meets, just so we can have a nice blend here. A nice blending of our colors. Streaking. Wow, it's coming together. It's coming together, and I do appreciate everyone's patience and I appreciate us working through this medium as we work to get back to some normalcy here for Fulton County but we really thank you for this landscape painting class. I am Kermit Ashford with Fulton County and Senior Citizens Department and Senior Services Department of Senior Services and we definitely want us to make sure that we're painting and having fun and utilizing our skills and make sure that we stay sharp at this time and not get relaxed and lose what we have. So we want to stay sharp and stay focused and let us know that pain offers us therapy, it's therapeutic, and it gives us, a, gives us an opportunity to create and share things with the world, but also learn some things about ourselves. So we are at this stage and maybe in two more sessions we can have this particular picture done and we're going to move to larger canvases so that can be more visible to you all the viewer and we will have our still life painting class and we will have our portrait painting class and we also will be doing urban gardening as well so we want people to tune in and to see all the great things that we have to offer here for the camera thank you